And Peter is making sure we understand we are not teaching you things that are just good stories or moral lessons that you can learn and be instructed by. He's saying the scriptures, the testimony of the prophets and apostles are not myths. They're not stories. They're not fiction. They're not tales. They're not inventions. They're not tools to be used to accomplish our own purposes. They're not falsehoods. So what are they not? They're not myths. They're not made up. You got that? That's the first thing he says. Not that. Let me lay out for you, Peter's saying, what they actually are. Look at the second half of verse 16. We get to what are the scriptures. Stay with me as we walk through what he's saying, and you will see by the end what his reasoning for talking about these things is. You'll see his reasoning when we get to the end for sure. He says, they're not myths. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. First of all, he's saying, what we're writing down in our testimony, it's not made up. It's drawn, in the gospel accounts especially, from eyewitness accounts, firsthand accounts that these apostles saw what Jesus did and said, and they saw, and they said, we saw his majesty. This word majesty means, I mean, it's, it's hard to even translate into English. It means superbness, visible slender, splendor, magnificence, greatness. We don't have words that can actually really translate megaleotes. It's the Greek word, mega. We get that, right? Something is mega. He's saying it's mega marvelous majestic, and he's talking about the Lord Jesus. We are eyewitnesses. We saw his majesty. The majesty of Jesus is seen all throughout the scriptures. He came to Moses as a flame of fire. He came to the people of Israel covered in thick darkness and shaking the mountain. He came to Isaiah as one whose entire robe filled the temple. He came to Job as a whirlwind. He came to Ezekiel as armored fire. Go read the prophet Ezekiel and see when he gets a manifestation of Jesus' presence, all all Ezekiel can basically do is say, it's like fire with wearing armor. He came to Joshua as a warrior with a drawn sword prepared for battle. He came to the Apostle John at the end of his life as one from whose mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun shining in full strength. This is the Lord Jesus. And he is glorious. He is superb. He's splendid. He is magnificent. What word could be used to sum up all of that? We'll have to settle with majestic. This is who Jesus is. And this is what Peter and James and John saw firsthand in Jesus' life. 